<laughs> Don't miss My World with Mike Iaconelli as he spends a day on the water and in the world of some of the best professional athletes Mondays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. Waypoint TV. Tune in to the newest season of Hunt Club with Philip Culpepper on Waypoint TV. Experience the highs, lows, and extreme fun of hunting the southern turkey woods every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Waypoint TV. Priorities shift, and you need that balance. You need to be able to kind of have a, yeah, you know, your your family life, your home life, and, you know, not traveling like, you know, a wild banshee like I was <laughs> in the past was uh you know, that, that's a challenge, whether with or without, you know, if you have a family, it, it's challenging. So I'm, I'm very grateful that um, it's all it's all worked out. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer podcast, inspiring real women with a passion for fishing in the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your host, Master Captain Angie Scott. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer podcast. Wow, I'm coming to you hot off the heels of the 2023 Outdoor Media Summit in the beautiful city of Boise, Idaho, which is surrounded by mountains. Traveled all the way up there thanks to you, the listeners and supporters of this podcast, because you voted this show Best Outdoor Podcast of 2022. It's a labor of love, but things like this make all the hard work week after week so worthwhile. That and the mission of the show, uh, getting to share stories of amazing women in the outdoors who are accomplishing incredible things and inspiring others to get involved. That's why I continue to do what I do. So just as soon as I got home from Boise, I had to immediately unpack and repack for the final LBA tournament of the years, which is the classic on um, Bull Shoals Lake in Pier- Peel, Arkansas, out of Anchor Point. And uh, super, super excited to get back there. No rest for the weary, but that's okay. I get the uh, rare opportunity to practice fish with Lori Povasol from Two Chicks in a Boat, barring any unforeseen changes. Uh, and my tournament co's for day one and day two are Diane Williams and Renee Key Johnson. Fish with both of those ladies before, so I'm excited to have them back in the boat. And I think this is just going to be a super fun tournament. Um, I don't know what it is about this one. Uh, I've been to both shows before, but it was totally different conditions uh, where it was 30 foot flooded. And now it's actually like about five foot low. So it's going to be a 35 foot different lake than when I was there last. But I'm just really looking forward to getting back there and just having a good time being out on the water fishing. According to the forecast right now, it looks like we've got some pretty mild conditions, so not too hot, not too cold, not a lot of rain in the forecast, not a lot of high winds, so we shouldn't have any uh, crazy scenarios that we've had to deal with in the past. Um, So I think it's just going to be a fun, relaxing tournament. It is the championship, of course, so you want to do really well. Um, So yeah, I think it's going to be fun. During our banquet, which is the evening of the final day of practice, uh, which is tomorrow as this episode comes out, we'll get to meet the new owners of the LBAA and hopefully find out more about what the 2024 season is going to hold. Uh, a lot of this information is going to kind of determine and shape my decision for 2024. And uh, that being said, I hope to present to you a very special solo episode next week with a lot of news and um, some big changes going forward. So before I get into this week's episode, I did want to make a quick announcement because I'm really excited. Um, The MPAA conference is down in Fort Myers again this year, uh, January 5th through the 7th. I want to talk real quick about this program. I mentioned it a few times. I think some people get a little intimidated by the name of the organization, National Professional Anglers Association. But really what it is, it's an organization for anybody who's interested in, wants to take their fishing, their career, you know, 
whether it be a full-time career or something you do for fun, but maybe, you know, would want to turn it into something down the road. It's just an organization to network, uh, get to learn, hear from some incredible industry professionals. It's really information that you're not going to get through any other kind of organization. Um, The dues for the year, this is the the kicker here, hundred bucks. But what you get with your membership, aside from having access to this conference, regular newsletters with tons of super inf- uh, important information about what's going on in fishing, they have all these partner programs and you get massive discounts with all the partners. So if you spend a lot of money on fishing gear, <laughs> you're going to um, pay for your $100 dues within the first couple things that you order through one of the partners. Uh, just to name a few, they're affiliated with Pure Fishing, Rapala, Sunline, 13 Fishing, AFCO, Amped Outdoors, Big Bite Baits, uh, Ducket Baits, I'm just kind of, there's so many, Hobie Eyewear, uh, Offshore Tackle, Ray Marine, St. Croix Rods, Lose Strike King, um, on and on and on and on. It's a no-brainer, really, to join this organization. And they do a lot of great things for the industry and conservation and their Future Anglers Foundation. But anyway, during this conference, we're really looking forward to it. Uh, Pat and I, the director, he has given us uh, ladies a -a two-and-a-half-hour workshop on the first day of the conference, which is Friday, January 5th. And we're putting together a pretty exciting panel of some professional lady anglers and ladies in the fishing industry to kind of give their perspective. I think it's going to be a very, very insightful two and a half hours. And so I hope you can join us for the conference down there in Fort Myers. But the other exciting thing that I wanted to talk about is that once again, uh, we did this last year on the last day of the conference, which is Sunday. The seventh, us ladies kind of broke away and uh, and met up with a bunch of other amazing ladies uh, in the area and some that traveled down just for this. Uh, but we did a women's kayak fishing meetup in conjunction with Gol- Gulf Coast Kayak, and it was a blast. So we're super excited about doing it again this year. Um, the registrations are live. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the show notes for this episode if this is something you're interested in participating in. Uh, we're, we plan to meet up. Things could change, but right now we're planning to meet up around 8 in the morning, Matt Lachey, and fish until 1 o'clock. And then we're all going to go grab some lunch and tell some fish tales uh, there on the island. So we're really, really excited about that. You have two options. There's a guided option where everything's provided, your kayak, all your gear, it's only 135 bucks a person, and then you also have another option of bringing your own kayak. And um, I think I'm gonna try to get hooked up with a kayak because I want to make sure that all the guided spots are available. There's only 15, so it's gonna fill up really quick. Um, and so, just want you guys to be one of the first to be aware of this. If you're able to join us, we'd love to have you. Again, I'll put a link to the registration in the show notes. And uh, just let me know if you have any questions. All right, let's get into this episode. With everything going on between Boise, going to the classic, as always, my angel in disguise, the crappie hippie John King from the Fish Nerds podcast, came out of nowhere to save my butt. He shared with me an incredible catch up conversation that he recently had with. A former woman angler and adventurer guest and fish nerds guest, Anna on Ice. And he's offering to let me share this conversation with you so you guys can get caught up on what all is going on with Anna. And ironically, I listened to this uh, recording on my flight from Atlanta to Boise. And uh, just to learn that Anna had relocated to Boise of all places. So coincidence? I think not. So I think it's a little bit serendipitous to share this conversation with you all this week. You're really going to enjoy it. And thank you once again, John King, a.k.a. the Crappie Hippie and the Fish Nerds podcast for being such great friends and whom I consider partners at this point of the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast. 
With that, please, everyone, enjoy getting caught up with Anna on Ice and all the epic changes going on in her life over the past few years. Hello, Fish Nerd Nation. I am so excited because today in Glasswater Angling Studios, I have a young lady who was actually on the show early in 2020. She is someone I met through Instagram. I had seen this woman posting these great fishing pictures, mostly ice fishing pictures, uh, some extreme ice fishing pictures. And I thought, my goodness, now Clay wants me to get more women on the pod. This was early in my correspondent days, and I wanted to do what the boss wanted me to do. So I reached out to this person, and we did this. This big huge interview we had to split it into three parts we had so much darn fun but we had a lot of fun getting her on the show early in 2020 she is an ice fishing authority she has also been involved with outdoor television and she is a gear model for dsg outerwear designed by women for women now when i first met her she was on a lesson but now she's on a brady please join me as we catch up with anna on ice Yeah, we've got we've got kind of a, a history. We've kind of got a history role. I was gonna say you said 2020. I was gonna say you were probably one of my very first followers ever, John. Yeah, well, I was. I was. Yeah, I was amongst your earlies. That's for sure. And then I went over to research you, and that's how I got to know Angie Scott. And uh, basically, yeah. all kinds of good things came out of it. But uh, we sure had a lot of fun putting that together because it was a gigantic interview that I had to split over three episodes. Oh my uh, gosh. That's yeah, right. it was great. So, all right. So first thing I'm going to do here is play a little bit from 2020. Uh, we're, I was talking to Anna about her plans for the future in terms of matrimony. And here's what she had to say. Uh, what about family goals? You know, family goals. Are, <laughs> what, what does that look like? You know, I feel like I got a lot of time left, so I'm I'm just going to keep doing me. I'm just going to keep, you know, fishing my life away and if uh, you know, if I if I decide to settle down with a with a guy that can keep up with me, then uh <laughs> <laughs> then that that might be in the cards, but uh um, you know, I like I said, I'm sure having a family one day and and you know, kind of laying some roots here in Minnesota are, are definitely definitely in my cards. Um in the future, but boy, I got a lot of fishing. I want to get done before then. So. All right on it. Well, from looking at your Instagram feed, I see that, uh, you finally found a guy that could keep up with you. <laughs> yeah. I would say probably not even a, not even a, a month after, uh, that call <laughs> we, we, uh, um, yeah, you must have manifested it into, into, you know, fruition there, John. So yeah, no, I am happily, I'm happily married, um, to my husband, Ben. I actually, uh, funny enough, I, I've known Ben since the third grade. I actually ended up marrying my best friend's brother. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. That is yeah. sweet. I tell you, I am just crazy about this kind of stuff. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> love to hear stories about how people got together and all that. Yes, it, we're actually in, in over ice fishing. Uh, funny enough, um, no, I you know we we joke that um, you know we always we always kind of um, you know thought each other thought fancied each other, but it, to me he was always off limits. He was my uh, my best friend's brother, so I you know never really uh, neither one of us ever really kind of made a move. But um, we used to do go on an ice fishing trip. Um, so his sister, my best friend's name is Lauren, um, and her husband. Uh, the four of us would do an ice fishing trip every year. And, uh, in 2020, uh, that same trip that January, uh, Lauren and Andrew's dog was with them and got sick, like super sick. He's fine now, but they had to drive him to an emergency vet. So it was just Ben and I, and that actually opened the opportunity for us to, um, yeah, to build a, build action onto an actual relationship together. So here we are now in 2023 and we're married and we have a beautiful eight month old boy. Well, I'll be darned. I'll <laughs> tell you what, thank you dog for your timely illness. I'm glad you recovered yes. completely, but it all worked out, uh, in the ripples of life that gave Anna and Ben some one-on-one -on -one time in a very, um, relaxed, a uh, very fun atmosphere called fishing, which is a great place to make a buddy and apparently a great place to meet a life partner as well. That's fantastic. I love that story. 
Yes, we we uh, we all we often say to their dog Knox. We're always like, "Hey, Knox, we appreciate that you know you took one for the team and you got sick and <laughs> 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 you had to you had to leave." And it was and what was actually even uh, even cooler and pretty special. We the place we actually got married was on the very same lake. Um, the venue is on the lake that we were um, fishing. So a year and a half later, we got married in the same spot. So it was pretty, oh. pretty full circle. Oh my goodness. That is so fun. I tell you, I just can't stand it when it go, goes so great and goes so right. And things all fall together like that. What a romantic way to tie the knot and to come back to where the spark happened in the first place. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Now, speaking of Frederick, Freddie, Yes. cutest 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 little fella i ever did see i'm telling you here's a little thing you had to say about uh or i had to say i think i was kind of teasing you about well once you got married did you plan on starting a family and uh this is what we were talking about back then i i just keep having this strange mental picture of you going into labor on the ice and <laughs> nicole's screaming come on anna come on and you're like fish on flasher fish on flasher just, yeah <laughs> Oh, Can't leave I'm hooked yet. up. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I just have the baby on the ice. So yeah, that'll yeah. Go well. <laughs> oh, oh, the, the the views, the views, it would go viral for sure. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. Okay, so unless you decided to keep it some sort of secret and just not put it on Instagram, you did manage to have your child not on the ice while fishing. <laughs> You did manage to, to get to proper facilities and 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 give birth in a in a more stable, controlled environment. Correct? Yes, surprisingly. And he was he was born at the very end of December, so I would have had the opportunity, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to have him on on the ice. But no, you know, we went the we we played the safe route, and uh, no, I I did have him at the hospital, and <laughs> well. um, yeah. He has yet to be on the ice, but that will change very soon here uh, with winter on the corner. So I'm excited to um, to get him out here on the ice out here in Idaho. So, well, it's going to be great because I can just see that sweet little head peeping up out of your DSG wear as you uh, <laughs> jig for some of those gigantic yellow perch that you've been catching. Yes. Now, it's kind of funny to me that both you and your good buddy, Nicole, who is is one of your top fishing buddies, uh, yes. Both decided to cross the uh, parental line right around the same time. <laughs> Indeed, yes, we did. Yes, it was. Uh, and she actually, she didn't, um, she didn't tell people for a while. You know, well, neither one of us did. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I she had her daughter uh, in the middle of October, and yeah, we had Freddie at the end of December. So we, and now we joke, it's like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're right around the same age. One day, maybe we can, we can set them up. <laughs> it would be a dream come true for Nicole and I. <laughs> well, that would be, that would just be fabulous if they could become fishing buddies and and go out and be friends and, and all that. And um, I think there's a good chance of that happening. I really, really do. Okay. So big changes, big changes. We talked a lot when I talked to you in 2020, we talked a lot about your career ambitions and your ideas and, you know, where were you going long run, planning on staying with this fishing, planning on having a career in fishing. Tell us how things have changed or how you've modified your vision or, or how you've added to it or however you want to express this, but talk about what you're doing now and, and what you plan to be doing in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I, I, um, yeah, it was fun to listen back on in our previous conversation, and I, I, I was, re I'm really thankful that I got to take, you know, those few years and really just immerse myself in, you know, the fishing world and industry, particularly ice fishing. From a career standpoint, it was fabulous. And then, as you know, uh, yeah, big changes. Huh, that's an understatement. So, you know, I think even in that pot, our previous podcast, I was talking about, you know, wanting to, you know, s lay roots in Minnesota. But my my husband, Ben's job actually brought us out to had, had a great opportunity in Idaho. So um, we are in the Boise metro. And, you know, that kind of presented some challenges with my career, but it, it was ultimately a blessing in disguise because I'll be honest with you um anybody who's full time uh, and Nicole would attest to this if she was on here but any you know if you are full time in that industry it's it's a grind i learned really quickly there's no such thing as kind of separating your your professional and personal life um it was <laughs> your your full time 
you know, all the time. And, uh, and there was a lot of travel involved, which I really enjoyed um, for those years that, um, you know, I was able to do it and before we moved and everything. And uh, it was, it was a, a definitely a grind, but it was something I'm a, an opportunity I was really thankful for. But going back to just kind of having a nine to five and splitting fishing as my passion versus my profession. You know, you ask anybody who turns their passion into profession and there's kind of a fine line you dance on where something that you love becomes, you know, a job. <laughs> so hey, um, you're, you're preaching to the choir right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might know a thing or two about that. So yeah, so I actually, I, I found a, um, I have a great nine to five job that has a ton of flexibility. I work from home and um, I'm I'm really in charge of my own schedule, so I I, I work in marketing, so it's it's great because I kind of get to still dabble in a lot of what I learned from working in the industry, but I can now have kind of that separation that I really almost forgot about in those years that I was immersed in um you know the fishing world career. So I'm I'm thankful because it's like oh I get to enjoy fishing for fishing again. <laughs> and it, I get to do the fun stuff where I get to do um you know I get to do the social media aspect uh which you and I you know bond over quite a bit. So um it's it's really panned out to be exactly where I want it to be. And you know now now that I'm not nine months pregnant and, you know, about to give birth in, in the middle of my favorite season. I'm literally looking forward to <laughs> to this, this upcoming ice season. I've got some really fun trips planned and yeah, it's, it's been great exploring that in a whole entirely new state on top of it. Would you like fishing and hunting information and tips from experienced outdoors women? Want to learn more about outdoor gear that works for you? Want inspiration and try to find something new in the outdoors? then subscribe to Adventurous, the only women's hunting and fishing magazine. Adventurous is a high quality print magazine you'll be sure to love, and it makes a great gift for other outdoors women and youth. Subscribe at adventurousmagazine.com. Well, yeah, we'll get into some comparisons between your old home and your new home, but I'm really am excited for you because you, you start a family and your priorities have to change. And Absolutely. it's great that you can tailor a situation to help you do both things to the max, as we used to say back in the 70s, to the max. <laughs> and uh, you can enjoy your fishing now. Um, it kind of reminds me of my daughter, you know, she's an artist, but she never wanted to be just a professional artist all, you know, depending on that for income and so forth. You know, she'd rather have the freedom of ideas and the freedom of separation and keep her art kind of over there. And it, it's great that Freddie's going to have a mom that can hang out and a dad that can hang out and is not pressed to travel and is not pressed to uh, make these hard decisions. So I'm really, 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 really happy for you. And glad to see you're making it work. That is fantastic. Thank you, John. Yes. No, the balance is, um, like you said, it, it definitely, your priorities shift and you need that balance. You need to be able to kind of have a, yeah, you know, your, your family life, your home life and, you know, not traveling like, you know, a wild banshee like I was <laughs> in the past was, uh, you know, that that's a challenge, whether with or without, you know, if you have a family, it, it's challenging. So I'm, I'm very grateful that, um, it's all, it's all worked out and that I have a partner who values it just as much as I do, that we still get to pursue our passions while, you know, growing a family together. It, it is just, it's just wonderful. It, it's an amazing story. And I'm so glad you agreed to come on and talk to us about that and uh, how it's all, you know, coming together for you. I'm always glad to hear we need good news, especially now. And you'll get back to that, that stuff that we talked about, the, the saltwater fishing, and oh, yeah. actually, it's probably pretty good. Your idea about going back to Ukraine for a while and, and doing some professional ice fishing there or some competitive ice fishing there. Maybe it's a good thing that that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Given the, the current circumstances, yeah, it, it might be a little while for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I think that one's going to go on hold irregardless. So let's do when you said you were moving to Idaho. I was like, well, it's cold up there. They got ice up there. Um, I think she'll be all right. They, I don't think they got near as many lakes as Minnesota, though. So how's things going with your Idaho fishing versus Minnesota? What What are your regrets about not being back in your old home? But what are the bonuses for being in your new home? 
Oh, for sure. Yeah, there's there's pros and cons, you know, of of course, with any big move like that. But it was it was funny when we when Ben got the opportunity presented um, for his his company to move us out here, you know, right away, I was like, Oh, my gosh, I was like, if you know, Boise was one of the options and Lake Cascade, which is just about an hour north of the Boise metro area uh, has been on my bucket list since forever. Lake Cascade is home to the world record yellow perch. And if you've seen pictures of them, it's they're yeah, I mean, they're almost too, they're, they're almost mutants. <laughs> they are. They almost almost, I'm glad. I went, I'm glad you said it first because I was just like, these <laughs> are not normal yellow perch from this planet. I've, I've not, don't have wide experience with yellow perch. A uh, few people are playing around stocking them in ponds in Kansas, but not many. And of course I saw your Minnesota perch. I got to go yellow perch fishing with clay and enjoy the heck out of that species. But these things are like red fins you know, in Europe yes. or something, they are bananas big, just crazy big perch. I'm not surprised the world records from there. No, they are. Yeah, they it's an, I, so they had been on my I list for a long time, just because anybody who's deep into the ice fishing world knows what knows all about Lake Cascade perch. And so I was super excited by, you know, the opportunity. So we ended up, um, yeah, we ended up falling in love with, with the area. And um, it's just been such a fun last two winters getting to explore that body of water. Um, it's got a super cool history behind how that population came to be. And yeah, we've gotten to catch a, a bunch of new species to, you know, I've, I've gotten to, I've caught, I caught my first pike minnow, was not familiar with that <laughs> species right. at all. Um, was, you know, only, you know, heard about it a few times. I've gotten to, got to pull several different species of trout through the ice, which has been super fun. Um, mountain white fish are existent in that lake. So it's, it's just been really, really cool um, to explore that body of water. Very, you know, mountain lakes are very different from what we're used to in the Midwest. Um, weather and snowpack plays a big role in you know, fishing conditions. So unlike in the Midwest where, you know, a lot of people have fish houses and permanents or skid shacks, that's, that is not a thing out here. Um, it's just, it's, it's kind of almost impossible because if you had anything kind of permanent or semi-permanent out there, you know, you run the risk of it <laughs> snowing two feet on top of you and you're never seeing, you know, your, your shelter again, kind of a thing. So, <laughs> it's, it's Holy been, smokes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a kind of a wild ride getting to learn all about it, but, and there's, there's lots of other uh, bodies of water too, that I've yet to even explore. I mean, I, like I said, I've only, we've only been out here for two winters and one of those, I had a brand new newborn. So this winter will be um, another super exciting exploration time for me. So I'm I'm very excited that there's two other big lakes here that I'm just itching to get on um, some safe ice. So got to check some more species off my list. Wow. It just sounds super fantastic. So those, those mountain lakes, they're awful, awful deep compared to say glacial lakes or, I mean, um, you know, rolling prairie lakes, glacial formed uh, lakes um, in Minnesota pretty cool stuff and and i knew you'd be getting into the trout fishing out there that uh, sounds fantastic yeah it's almost impossible not to i mean it it's it's for sure i mean even just culturally in a fishing from a fishing standpoint it's so different out here trout is king um in the west when it comes to just kind of the community around fishing it's it's definitely yeah i mean everybody just really really is uh very attracted to the trout fishing out here you know obviously fly fishing is huge so it's been really cool to kind of embark on all those new species but also you know get to catch them through the ice has been super cool i mean we've definitely caught some in the rivers and open water but yeah you know you know me <laughs> i do know <laughs> you through the ice is ideal <laughs> yes yes that is your jam that is your way to get it done i was gonna ask you you know if you've been tempted to pick up that old fly rod and try some of those streams in the uh open water season. Yes. Yeah. We actually, um, I, I, I grew up doing a little bit of fly fishing. I was really, I mean, I was really young, you know, cause I grew up in Duluth, Minnesota. There's a lot of great fly fishing opportunities up the North and South shore, uh, of Lake Superior. So, you know, it, it's definitely not like riding a bike. You don't get to pick up where you left off. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I had a lot of learning curve. 
to to kind of reestablish. But both Ben and I last last summer um, do did a lot of camping, so we got to explore lots of new trout streams and rivers and lakes, and kind of yeah, it's been really fun to kind of start cutting our teeth with fly fishing too. Well, you got my envy. I read a lot of John Gearock, and he talks about going to Idaho for the great fly fishing, the famous, famous rivers there, and to catch those native western cutthroats on my bucket list. And I don't like saying bucket list or using that popular term very much, but getting a cutthroat is something I really, really wanted to do. Have you got one yet? I have not. And that's actually my my first order of business because one of the very first lakes to freeze, and you're probably, maybe you're familiar with it, but it's called Henry's Lake. And that is one of the, if I'm not mistaken, it's the pre-spawning lake that connects to the Yellowstone River where a whole bunch of the native cutthroats kind of originate. And it is one of the very first lakes in Idaho to freeze over. Um, so anybody, you know, who likes ice fish out here, you know, it's kind of a countdown. Um, some people in the past have even been on the ice and Henry's catching huge cutthroats. I mean, huge cutthroats as soon as Halloween. So that oh. was a couple of years, a couple of years ago, people were out there at the end of October catching cutthroats through the ice, which is just crazy. So you, you and me both, John, I'm, I'm very, very excited to catch, catch that species. Well, they are something gorgeous and I'm glad to see the trend now is to protect them and to quit just yes. stocking the non-native trout willy nilly just because everybody everywhere wants everything and i can understand that impulse to an extent i know when i was young i was like you need to bring small mouth to kansas and you need to do this you need to do that and of course i've gone a complete 180 on that i want to see the cutthroat uh, protected i want to see mississippi drainage protected and our species protected um you know we don't need to have everything everywhere all the time and uh Sounds like that's a pretty pure fishery because if the cuts are getting that big, that must mean they're having the lion's share of the food. And you, well, you know, I'm going to be there, girl, on Instagram to see you when you pull that first cutty <laughs> through the ice. I'm going to be there. You might get it. Maybe, maybe I'll send you a preview before I post it. So you can be in the exclusive club of seeing it first. Oh, well, that would make <laughs> me feel special, but so exciting. Just so exciting. All righty. So I love you're modeling for DSG outerwear, the outerwear for women designed by women. You were still modeling that stuff when you were pregnant. It looked like it fit really nice that you were very comfortable in it. You want to talk about DSG for a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, it's been so cool to see uh, just how back when I, so Nicole and I laugh about it because back when we first started fishing together, even before we even knew each other, I mean, all we ever did was wear men's smalls because there's no there was no such thing as adequate ice fishing or outerwear for us ladies i mean nobody was making it there was a couple brands that were dabbling in it but basically they were just kind of taking cookie cutter sizes of men's stuff and just like shortening the sleeves or shortening the pant legs and it was just never a good fit you know so it was really cool to see brands like dsg kind of come to the table and be like you know we we want to make functional gear that's not just taking men's stuff and shrinking it and turn, you know, making it pink. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, exactly. What they were doing, you know, a lot of those brands were doing. So, um, yeah, it's been I, the the brand has just exploded, and it. I think it's if it's been it's been almost like a, a a double whammy. It's like if you build it, they'll come, kind of a thing. It's like you have this right gear, and all of a sudden we've seen just this huge surge of popularity in girls getting out enjoying the sport uh in, independently you know not just you know oh i grew up in an ice fishing family sort of a deal it's like no there's girls who are who are embarking on getting into the sport getting into both open water and ice fishing because finally they feel you know like they have gear that's comfortable for them so it's been really fun to be a part of the the dsg family for the last few years you know i've, I've made a lot of really great friends that you know, have just contacted me about the gear and then we start talking fishing and um, yeah, I've got to meet up with girls from all over the place that um, have been involved with the brand. So it's, it's been a really, really fun to be a part of that. Well, I'm glad to hear it. And I'll tell you, you are such a great ambassador. DSG is, is lucky to have you. What, what I hear on uh, woman angler and adventurer and Angie's podcast, Angie Scott, is that women that are into this design are just like men that design outdoor clothes, do it for men. 
And like you say, it's you, you can't call it a woman's wear when you just downsize man's wear, men's wear. You got to understand that a woman might get pregnant. Yeah, she might be a lot bigger and, <laughs> and have curves that go a different way for a while. And then she's going to go back to pretty much the way she was until it goes through another life change of some sort. So recognizing that we're curvy in different places, that we've got different needs as far as comfort on the ice, being able to go to the bathroom, being able to attend to whatever personal hygiene we need to attend to. A woman designer is going to be more in tune with that, I think. And DSG seems to uh, understand that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't have said it better. It's it's uh, women's gear that is, you know, designed by and for women. You know, you can't you can't get more straightforward in, in terms of adequate functionality than that. Um, and it's it's just, you know, what's what I think is really cool, too, uh, about that brand is from the get go, they have a you know, we we have like kind of an open water team of girls and a um, ice fishing team of girls and a hunting team of girls. And us as a team, we're completely involved from from start to finish in the design, which what other brands are still doing that? You know, there there really aren't, um, you know, and they're sending out, you know, even just test runs for some of us the season before to test it out and give critical feedback of like, okay, I think this works well, this doesn't work well, let's let's swap this out for this kind of a thing. And it's just like, man, I, I have not encountered that, you know, with a lot, most brands are just like, nope, we, we placed an order, like it is what it is. But getting to be a part of um, the design aspect and knowing that it's been kind of tried and tried and true test field tested is, is, you know, you can't, you can't beat that. Well, it sounds logical. It sounds like something that makes sense. I'll tell you one thing. My wife just loves you, loves your attitude, because you are not afraid to talk about comfort. She says, you know, John, you guys go out there and just seem to hunt up misery. You just seem to want to be miserable. A fine and pleasant misery is what you're after. Uh, you're out getting wet. You're out getting cold. You're out in the wind. You're out doing this or that. But I told her all about how you will do the most insane things on the ice where she says 60 below. No way I could get that. But I, <laughs> I say she gears up for it. She does not want to be uncomfortable. She does not want to be miserable. She does not want to tell stories about how she got froze to the, to the uh, ice drill. And it's great that we have women that aren't afraid to say, look, I don't want to be miserable. Is that a problem? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, and those of us that, you know, had experienced the, you know, who were dumb enough to experience all the, <laughs> the, the, you know, the, the uncomfortableness and, um, you know, before any of those things were, you know, possible, like, if you look at all the technology advances, I mean, look at how nice even like the, you know, different, the ice fishing hubs and the shacks that are out there now. I mean, oh my gosh, those things were not in existence 15, 20 years ago. We all just used to be sitting on a plastic bucket, freezing our butts off, <laughs> <laughs> you know, wearing, wearing way too many layers. And, you know, it's just, it's changed. And I think that's, that's, that's a really good point. I mean, I think the, you know, having gear that people can enjoy the outdoor sport, the, these outdoor sports, comfortably it cha it's a game changer it, it allows people who are you know not not the the weekend warriors well, <laughs> it they, allows people you know to, to be able to enjoy yes you want people to be comfortable when it comes down to the clothes you got to be able to move around your your boots have to fit and things like that and it's not um wrong to say so and to say hey make me something comfortable that actually fits me so good job dsg outerwear Oh, also, one thing I wanted to mention, we keep talking about Nicole, like everybody knows who she is. It's Nicole from Nicole Stone Outdoors. Which she was also on Fish Nerds talking about walleye and what walleye can see color wise and so forth. And we had a lot of fun with that interview. And I may have to run her down and ask her a lot of the same questions I've been asking you. But anyway, what is your big aspiration? OK, you want to get out with Freddie and Ben and you want to do the family thing and all that. But. Let's say 10 years from now, Freddie's 10 years old. You're 10 years down the road. You've, you've got some, you've got some mad money. You've got some things going on. Where do you, where do you want to go? What do you want to be doing? Ooh, that's a good one. You get, you always get the good questions, John. Um, you know, I, I want to be able to, I, I, I think, you know, as any parent, and you can probably attest to this, you want to be able to provide your, your kids this, you know, the opportunities that maybe you didn't get to have 
you know, that you really wanted to as a kid. Ben and I talk about it all the time. It's like growing up in, in the Midwest, we we had a lot of stuff at our fingertips, but you know, being able to hunt and fish in kind of these new dream locations that we, you know, like I said, as as kids kind of dreamed about, it's like, oh my gosh, we live here now. And being able to, you know, bring our kids along on those kinds of experiences will be just priceless. You know, I think that there's, there's a lot of things that we've accomplished in the last five, six years and gotten to see some see and do some really cool stuff. And it's like, oh, I look at, I look at some of the experiences I've had in the last, in that short time frame. I'm like, oh, it'd be so cool to, you know, show this to my child and get them out in the outdoors the way that I kind of dreamed of at, at that age. So um, that's definitely a huge aspiration for me. And still having that, you know, still having that balance. Um, you know, I, I know that Freddie and any future kids that we have, it's um, the outdoors are going to be a giant part of our lifestyle. It's going to be really cool to prioritize that for them and um, even for us to explore some new stuff and have them in tow. Well, I am going to be watching close and going to stay with this as long as God will and I can hang around here on this earth. I want to see Freddie and his first trip to Canada. I want to see Freddie get back to where mama's from in that minnesota water and then hopefully he'll go with you when you go out there to catch the mahi mahi and some of those things that you've been wanting to do before he came along well now you get to share it with him and it's going to be wonderful to see what kind of fishing he zeroes in on because we just did a thing about how the younger you start the more likely you are to stick with it for the all your life and boy did that young man land in the great place super super cool well anna let's see you were on Fish Nerds 239, uh, Fish Nerds 240, and Fish Nerds 247. So, folks, if you want to catch up with my interviews from the old days with Anna Lessishan, now Anna Brady. All right, I, I got to do it. I got to picture it. I'm tell, I, I wasn't going to say it, but I'm going to say it. I'm picturing the Brady Bunch going to Canada. <laughs> I don't think you're wrong. I, I think that might be it. I think that might be in our future. <laughs> I think it will be too, but I, I just couldn't get away from it. I apologize. All right. Well, I don't, if you don't have anything else you want to say or want to talk about, I could sit here and talk all day, but by golly, the remaining time is winding down. So final word. No, I just, I, I appreciate the opportunity, John, to catch up. I mean, it's, I, I, I just laughed kind of listening back on those, those older uh, episodes. It's like, oh, just so much has changed. It's, it's amazing how much can change in a really short time frame. It is really, really is amazing, but that's what's so beautiful about being young and alive and, and finding your, your true love and leaving your heart open to experience and having the flexibility and the courage to make changes and having the self-understanding to be able to pick it up and run with it. Well, anyway, I'm just bubbling over here with hearts and happiness for you, and we wish you all the best from the Fish Nerds. Thank you so much, John. I'll uh, I'll definitely keep you up to speed. Just be watching, be watching for some more of those uh, mega perch, perch uh, pictures because they'll they'll be coming soon. Oh, and one last thing, I do know where Idaho is, and you still owe me a fishing trip, so don't be surprised. Hey, you're you open open invitation. If you want to hit Henry's Lake, we we can go. We can go embark on the the cutthroat adventure together. <laughs> <laughs> all righty wow wow that sounds fantastic all righty well listen you take care of yourself and we will talk to you soon sounds good john thank you so much 